Hey guys! In the last video, I showed you the first stage of how to make your own apple cider vinegar from scratch. If you haven't seen that video already, please pause this video and click the link below. Here's where we left off. The apple pieces have been removed and we let the liquid and the young mother sit unbothered for an additional eight weeks. As you can see, the mother is a lot more developed than it was just a few weeks ago. By now, you probably also notice a strong sour vinegar scent coming from it. You can start to use it at this point. Just taste it to make sure all the alcohol has been converted into acetic acid, aka apple cider vinegar. You'll know by the sharp sour vinegar taste and smell. Then test to confirm that the pH is around a 2. Place it in an area of your kitchen counter that isn't exposed to direct sunlight. If you can't find one, use some sort of sack or bag to cover it up. As you use it, keep the cheesecloth on it so the mother has oxygen to continue to breathe and keep growing. Apple cider vinegar can be used in so many ways, and it has many great benefits. I use it on my hair as an ACV rinse. One, because it kills the bad bacteria lingering around on my scalp. And two, it helps me retighten my cuticles after the shampoo process lifted them. As I previously mentioned in a past video, humidity makes it hard for me to keep my hair stretched without over manipulating it. So over the summer months, I like to wear my hair in different long-term protective styles. I also use this time as an opportunity to really focus on the health of my scalp. So when my hair is in a long-term protective style, which is usually around April to August, sometimes September, I wash my scalp weekly rather than monthly, and I make sure to do an onion rinse and an ACV rinse each and every time. Here's how I do it. First, I coat my scalp with my onion juice recipe, making sure to massage it in. I just recently added my onion juice mixture into my regimen, and so far it's given me great results. I can't wait to post an update. Then I pin up my hair and cover it with a shower cap or plastic bag and wear some type of heating cap over it to give it some time to do its thing. After 30 minutes or so, I hop into the shower to shampoo my scalp. After the shampoo is rinsed out and my hair is squeaky clean, I spray my ACV rinse directly on my scalp and some on my faux locks and let it sit while I shower. I usually use a conditioner after I shampoo then an ACV rinse. But with faux locks, my natural hair is completely put away under synthetic hair, so a conditioner won't really be able to get to it. But if this were a braid or a twist, I wouldn't skip the conditioner step. In the science of how apple cider vinegar cleans your hair video, I got a few questions on what order to use. Shampoo, conditioner, ACV, or ACV shampoo, conditioner, or some other order. I definitely suggest cleaning your scalp first with a shampoo, followed by a conditioner, then an ACV rinse. Because the shampoo process can be harsh and cause your cuticles to relax too much and make your hair feel rough and dry. Amongst other things, conditioners are supposed to help tighten your cuticles back up, but most conditioners don't really do a good job at restoring them to the way they were. So doing an ACV rinse after will ensure your cuticles are tightened and laying flat. It's an extra step, so try not to drive yourself too crazy about this. It's not mandatory and you can still have really healthy and thriving hair with or without doing an ACV rinse. All these different methods and techniques are ways to slow down the deterioration of your hair, but they're not mandatory. Anyways, after I'm done showering, I rinse out the apple cider vinegar, then let my hair air dry. That's it. Pretty simple. I do this once a week when my hair is in a long-term protective style. My scalp is not just super clean, it's pH balanced and it's not clogged up with harmful bacteria or yeast. I've had these set of faux locks in for exactly five weeks, and here's all the new growth I'm working with. Year round, I also use my homemade apple cider vinegar in my daily digestive cleanser recipe. It does a really good job of helping you digest food better and keeping your stomach from getting bloated. 
I'll give you the recipe in the next video where I go over what exactly the mother in apple cider vinegar is and we'll talk about if it's really as beneficial as what people say. When you get down to about an inch or two of the apple cider vinegar remaining, starting a new batch is a lot more simple going forward. Fill a separate sterilized jar with apples and distilled water and pour the mother and the two inches of apple cider vinegar right on top of that. Now that you're working with a more developed mother, you don't need to add any extra sugar and it'll take about four weeks or so for it to be ready. Don't forget to cover it with a cheesecloth so the growing mother can breathe and flies don't get in. When it's ready, put the mother aside and make sure to add some apple cider vinegar to keep her lubricated and cover it. Strain the liquid into a jar that you want to use it from. As I mentioned earlier, I like to use a jar with a faucet because it makes life a lot easier. If you want to grow another mother, keep the airflow open. If not, cut off the airflow. Repeat this cycle over and over again. Each time the mother will continue to get bigger and stronger and infuse newer batches with even more healthy good bacteria. At this size, you can continue to just leave the mother in the apple cider vinegar as you use it. But when it gets to be about this big, it's a little too strong to just leave in while you're using it because it'll continue to turn the liquid and make it way too acetic. So to keep her happy, just start a new batch and put her on top so she can process it. You can even experiment with other fruits if you like. Science time! So that we're clear, making apple cider vinegar involves two stages. On a molecular level, the first stage is really complex, so here's the best and easiest way I can explain it. The yeast cells from the apple skins eat the sugar you added and the sugar from the apples. As they eat the sugars, they pee out alcohol and uh, fart out carbon dioxide gas. That's why in the first stage, the liquid turns into alcohol and you see foam and fizzing on the surface. Here's what that chemical reaction looks like. In the second stage, the acetobacter bacteria in the mother uses oxygen to convert the alcohol into acetic acid, aka apple cider vinegar. Here's the chemical reaction for that. So hopefully with these three videos, you have all the information you need to independently make your own apple cider vinegar from scratch. You also understand the importance of diluting it before using it, and you understand its benefits to your hair. In the next and final video in the series, I'm going to show and explain what's so special about the mother, and if it's really as beneficial to your hair and internal health as everyone says. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.